In this video, I will be importing a Hecras model into an existing Swim5 project, and from there applying a 2D overland mesh at a location identified as being vulnerable to flooding. I have already created a Swim5 hydrology model, and have opened a DEM layer in the project. I will now import an existing hydraulic model from a Hecras geometric file. I will specify to import the cross-sectional areas between the bridge piers to use multiple parallel conduits. I will also choose to create high-chord transects representing the bridge after inundation and will use available geo-referencing data to position the cross-section locations as opposed to using user-defined links. Now the subcatchments for this watershed have already been populated and a rain gauge with observed time series has already been created and assigned. These existing hydrology components need to be connected to the imported hydraulic model. Subcatchment outlets can be easily assigned using the Set Outlet tool. For this example, I will be assigning the outlet to be the node closest to the centroid of the subcatchment shape. Now that the subcatchment outlets have been assigned, the model can be run. Now after the model is run, you may notice that the model has been identified as having surcharging. This surcharging is likely caused by smaller bridges in the hydraulic system overtopping. I am now going to add a 2D component to a section of the watershed that was identified as being a flood damage center. I have already created the 2D layers, so I can easily set up the 2D backend options. For the obstructions layer, I will be using a building's footprint layer. And since the DEM is already loaded, I can begin to set up the 2D component starting with the 2D nodes. For this project, I will be using a regular hexagonal mesh with a resolution of 5 meters and a Manning's roughness coefficient of 0.14. I can now generate my points for my 2D nodes layer. Now the overland mesh will account for the overbank routing, so to ensure the overbank storage is not modeled twice, we need to remove the overbank stations for the links that lie within the 2D overland mesh. I will do this by first selecting the 1D pathway that lies within the 2D boundary layer. Once selected, I can open the transects editor. Notice how the transects associated with the selected conduits have now been selected. You can then truncate them using the truncate option. Now I'm going to create my 2D overland mesh. Integrating a 2D component into a section of the watershed has the benefits of better predicting the extent and duration of flood waters without the long computational run times that would result if modeled exclusively using 2D. The final step is to connect the 2D overland mesh to the 1D component of the model. Now I've tagged the junctions that I want to connect to the 2D mesh with a tag that allows me to easily select the junctions that need to be connected. Notice how there are two selected junctions that fall outside of the 2D boundary. In this situation, PC Swim will only connect the junctions that are inside the boundary layer. Now that the 2D overland mesh has been connected to the 1D model, we can run the integrated 1D 2D model and view the results. For more information, please visit us at chiwater.com. That's chiwater.com.